Hello Erie High Maritime Program students and our fellow boat builder friends. Here we are in the BMC boat shop and we're about to glue the chine in this boat. We have the chine all prepared. Uh, yesterday it was in the boat. We have the ends fit. We have some of the glue lines on. Um, we're, we'll apply the glue probably to the chine first and then where it's going to be next. Um, to put the glue on here, we're going to roll this boat over. So we're working on a horizontal surface. We're going to turn the boat this way, up, and over. Set it back down. And now you can get a pretty good view of, of this glue line I'm talking about. Because we don't want to get glue all over the place, just where we need it. So the chine's going to sit there like this, and that line is in the right place. You can put that line on like this with a combination square at the right spot or you could use a block of wood and get, your, get a good idea where the glue is going to go. Make sure you get glue inside this notch because the chine should be glued to, into the frame too, into here, all along here. And also the ends of this chine need to be glued to the stem. So I need to apply glue here and glue on the ends of the chines. Very important. Now, containment's really important uh, of the, so to keep the, no mess, no big mess. And that's important with uh, typical glue, wood glue that we'll use. Today, this is what we're using. And we'll spread this on with a paintbrush. But sometimes we use epoxy. And the cleanup and the containment is even more important with epoxy because today, if we used epoxy, we could wipe it off with a, a rag today. But tomorrow, we'll be chipping it off with a jackhammer and sandpaper and making a lot of dust. So it's important, that containment. So work clean and, um, and have a plan and, and work to your plan. Pretty important. Cleanup's a big part of it. We have our rags ready. We have some water ready in a bucket. Uh, to, to, wipe, to wipe, up, um, wipe up the mess. Um, like we do with epoxy, we cut the rags sort of small and when they get uh, messy, we just throw them out, pick, grab another rag. All right, we'll apply glue first on the bottom, on the side of the chine. And again, I've got some lines here. I wrote down glue, this side's getting glued. Um, I've seen it done where the glue went on the wrong side first, and that's just a bigger mess to clean up. So, tight bond glue. We're going to lay this out. I'm going to start at this other end. I think I'd rather start here and, and back up putting the glue on. That's what I'm going to do. It just seems easier for me that way. I'm going to lay out a bead. We have to be sort of quick and just coat it, and it'll soak in. Remember, I need the ends coated. Put on plenty. If I put on too much glue, a little bit of a mess to clean up. If I don't put on enough glue, it can be a, a weak, a weak um, adhesive joint, and we don't want weak on our boat. We'll try to put this on sort of quick. I can spread out a bead, spread it with a paintbrush, get this whole side coated, then we'll do the side of the canoe. Um, putting our glue lines on, also speeds up this process a little bit. We don't have to think about it too much. Just put it on. Spread it around. If you're thinking you don't have enough glue on there, put on a little more. Again, just a little more cleanup. Not a weak joint between the chine and the side of the boat. Okay. Now this is end grain. That's going to soak it up. I want to make sure you get that. All right, that looks pretty well coated. Now, go back and look over it, and if there's dry spots, and I saw a few there, there's one right there, no problem. Hit it with a little more glue, and uh, coat it. The end, coat it. All right, now, the boat. So, uh, we have our line, we're gonna follow it, same thing. And coat this pretty good. A little bit harder up in here. I think I'll make sure I get where the ends of the chines go when we set this boat back up upright, upside down. 
So it's been about a minute and a half of putting this glue on. There's a, a working time with adhesives. Um, it's all different. Some might be a half an hour, might be an hour. We're using epoxy, I use slow adhesive. What's the rush? We use slow adhesive, um, so we have a, a pretty long time to do this kind of work. And I'm gonna make sure I check the inside of that, both sides of that notch, when this boat's back upright and I can see it again. But with this glue, which it's not a adhesive where there's a chemical reaction and it's, go, it's going off, this is actually just drying this kind of glue. It's a water-based glue. And so there's not much working time. So I'm trying to go sort of quick. We're about ready to set this upright again. This looks good. I'm going to check it again because I can see it really well right now. Good. Set this down. We're going to roll this right side up, um, which is upside down in this case. So we're rotating this way. Here we go. Up and over and down. So now there's a few spots I need to check, and that's where the ends go, and inside this screw, in this screw here. Put some, oh yeah, glad we're doing this. Get that all wet. Put some glue right on my brush. Get the end, and I have my glue line in there. Hard to see right now, but that's all right. We'll clean that up with a damp rag. Get the other end, and we'll be putting this in place momentarily. Yeah, glad we're checking. All right, set this down and move the chine. I have gloves on. This cleans up with water, so I could just wash my hands if I got it on my hands, but um, uh, a lot of times I do this with epoxy and I definitely have to have gloves on. Now remember, this is longer than the boat because of the shape of the ends. So one end has to go down a little too far, like down in there, and scoot it up forward, like that. And then I fit it into the notch. Maybe not that far down. Um, get that in, bend this into place. And push it down farther into the notch. Now the whole chine needs to come uh, this way, forward on the boat. Okay. <clears throat> Once again, it's sort of hard to move because it's jammed in this joint. Um, I'm gonna try pulling again from here. Here we go. There it comes. All right. Now, it needs to come my way a little bit more too. How much? Um, I think it still needs to come my way a little bit. All right, I like that. Now, we have these rags all ready, and I need them. Um, I'm gonna grab a mallet, because we're gonna have to tap this up a little bit to get it right where we want it. This mallet's a rawhide mallet. It's got Rawhide in the ends and some weight, um, so you're not marring up the wood, but it's heavy when you're bumping on something. Let's come up on this end a little bit. Yeah, this now it's got to go um, that way um, towards the bow of the boat. Let's see, I'll try to pull it back this way. I could have put, and I, now that it's clear, I should have put a line on here when we had it before we pulled it out of the boat, then we could just line up that line and it would be in the right spot again. Because it's sort of hard to get it. Actually, that might be it. Right where I want it. I'm going to put a few spring clamps on. I left these where I can grab them pretty easy. And we're looking for that quarter inch sticking up. I'm going to get this in place, approximately in place here. I think that'll do. I think 
that'll do. Got some more spring clamps here. And I really want to squeeze this hard. So we're going to use C clamps also. Um, steel C clamps. So we can tighten those up and nothing's going to move. And it'll squeeze any glue out. Now because we're using tight bond glue, it doesn't do any gap filling. The wood has to be tight against the wood for that to be a strong joint. So, and that's another reason to use um, C clamps, powerful C clamps. It'll squeeze this accurately and positively in place. That's a little high. Um, I'm going to tap this down again with my mallet. And again, we'll push this down, put a spring clamp on it, and that'll hold it. Here's this right where I can find it again. All right, C clamps. Here we go. Um, a little high here. Tap it down. Squeeze it. Oh, yeah. And you can see the squeeze out coming. And that's really what I want to see. Tighten this clamp. A little bit of squeeze out there. So we had enough glue on there. Good. Um, tighten this up a little bit. Might go down just a touch here. Good. Tighten this up. Plenty of squeeze out. Good. And we'll wipe all that up with uh, sequins. Here we go. Wipe that up with damp rags as much as we can get that off today. Okay. You might notice that I already had these clamps set pretty much to the distance that I needed. They are open a little bit too much, so I, I didn't have to spend too much time right now um, getting these properly in place. Now there's a bunch of gaps here. We're going to need a bunch of clamps up at this end. Okay, now, and I'm going to have to tap that up. That, I know this joint fits really well, like that, if it's in place, right? Tighten that up. Good. I have a gap right there. A um, couple more seat lines. Sometimes when we're clamping one of these up, we have so many clamps on the rail, this gets heavy, these steel clamps. Um, Clips it up a little bit. Don't want that gap. There we go, a little bit of squeeze out. No gap. I'm keeping in mind to keep these clamps up like that too, as opposed to laying down like that, because we're gonna have to get under there with a rag, a damp rag and clean that out. So I'm um, thinking about the next step. There's a gap. Let's see here. Close this clamp up quickly, one-handed. Get pretty close. Yeah, I don't want to leave it laying down like this. I could have spun that a little bit more. I'll turn it up. A little bit of squeeze out. Good. If I can grab it with my hands and squeeze, for instance, right here, see that squeezing out? Um, it needs another clamp. That's not in where I want it. Tighten this up. I like using this water-based glue. It's less toxic. Um, it's easier to clean up. It'll wash out of your clothes. It'll wash out of your hair. It'll wash off the floor. Easier than epoxy. Um, easier and quicker. That won't work. Let's see. 
let's see. Here's one. We have a big clamp rack over here. All around. All right. We're going to end up using a lot of these clamps. This way. I got these at swap meets and um, yard sales. I'm constantly looking for good clamps to use in here. Now I'm squeezing that and I'm not seeing any movement or any glue coming in or out. So I don't need a clamp there. I might put one right here. All right, how's this? It's not moving. About right here. Yeah, I can use another one here. The other thing about using water-based glue, you can clean it off your clamps a lot easier. If you get epoxy on your clamps, which we do from time to time, after a while, when it gets bad enough, we have to chip it all off, knock it all off, and uh, to keep the clamps working good. Yeah, we have some squeeze out there. Good. Right here. We're pretty much in place. I've talked to a lot of people building these boats that they're watching and they say, I've always wanted to build a boat. I've built bookshelves and I've built tables and I've done things around the house and, I've, and I have some tools and I've used a lot of tools, but they're, they're I don't want to say afraid, but they're apprehensive about building a boat because they've heard how tricky they are and, and they are a little bit, but oh my gosh, I urge those people, oh my God, jump right in. Do start with a simple project like this and just do it because it's not that hard. We've done this with um, students, um, fourth graders, fifth graders, big brothers and big sisters. Uh, we've done this with um, National Honor Society groups. We've done this with um, challenged kids that, that have different, um, different challenges and capabilities. We've done this with blind students. Um, the site center of Erie came one time and said, we'd like our students to build a boat. And I loved that idea. And I said, let's do that. And then I had to realize, let me grab a putty knife. How are we going to do that? And instead of using pencils to mark out our layout lines and our cut lines and our fastener lines, we use tape. And the students built a beautiful boat. And they launched it in the swimming pool. And the principal of the school was there, jumped in with his suit on and went paddling in it. And then they sailed with us for some years. So it's really a great project for groups, just about any kind of group. And there's team building in here. There's problem solving in here. There's STEM, science. It's all uh, math. And um, uh, we try to keep the math real easy. But um, there's math in here. Um, science and engineering, technology, and mathematics, and art. Because it's a boat. It's a beautiful thing when it's done. Um, as you can see, hanging on the walls. and and around, and it's a, what a great project for a, uh, a family to do, especially this time in coronavirus, um, to, uh, um, to do with your family, your entire family. You end up with a boat that you're proud of, the family built. All right, I'm still just cleaning this glue off. Now this whole bottom gets planed off and um, to be flat, to fit the plywood. Um, so if we didn't cut, take this off now, it'd be, it'd be okay, it'd come off later. If we used epoxy, it would come off a lot harder later. So it's good to do it now. Um, we have to get the inside under here. I haven't looked yet, but I'm sure it's dripping down the side of the boat, and we'll do that next. We'll roll this boat right side up, where we can see in there and clean it some more on the other side. Yeah, the cleanup's important. And as you can see, we're halfway done already with this one. Not too bad. Um, sometimes with epoxy, we'll use tape mitt, we'll use uh, masking tape. And so we have our glue line and we'll go a quarter inch below it, and then we'll use masking tape. Um, and so if it does drip and run, uh, we can just peel the tape. 
So we'll continue cleaning this up. We'll clean up the inside. I hope you got a good feel about how to install your chines. Um, we'll continue this in a, next time. We'll get the other chine on. So uh, see you next time.